I remember the judge saying to me, Mr. Brandred, you're such an accomplished painter. Why do you persist in doing these forgery? I said, it's like this. When I see an old canvas, I can't help it. I, I've just, I've got a knack of being able to copy any subject. Doesn't matter. I've done Picasso. I did a Picasso and I couldn't even, a man with a guitar, I didn't know which way it went up. I did it upside down, apparently. Can you tell me where did you grow up and what was your childhood like? Um, I grew up in Brighton, in Buckingham Road, near the station. First room was Mum's room, who lived with my half-sister, stayed there. Back bedroom were three of us, all top to toe in a bed. You know, that was it. Hardly any blankets, big army coat on the bed. It was poverty. There's a place in Brighton called Warren Farm. And it was, we, I spent uh, about two years in there. We were back and forwards to the home until finally one day, I think they'd had enough, you know, they came to us and Mrs Gibson and Mr Odin and brought us new clothes, all in grey, and said, your boys would have to take them. It was like a care system you were taking. It was at Bernardo's, Dr Bernardo's. Yeah. Why is that? Just because your mum... Mum had TB. Thinking... Mum had a form of tuberculosis. She worked in the laundry in the 30s and from the damp sheets she got this, uh, so she just couldn't like, look after us. And that's what they used to do in those days. You had no choice just to take you away and that was it. Mm. After that, they moved us around from one place to another and uh, that was the homes. Oh, uh, incidentally, Peggy Ridley bought me my first set of oil paints and I started oils it when I was six, six and a half, just six, just before I went into Dr. Bernardo's. She put these lovely paints and I, oh, hours and hours doing everything. I even started a copy. I was copying a bit of Constables, a Hay Wayne and doing things like that. So I painted all my life. And when you get into Bernardo's system, they encourage it. They, if, I, if it hadn't been for Bernardo's, I don't know where I'd have been. I really don't know. But on the day I left, on a November night with £1.50 or 10 shillings, no, 30 shillings in my pocket, and I actually ended up uh, looking for jobs and I saw this, men wanted for circus. This is my circus days. And the first guy that came to me was a guy called Louis, and he went, what do you want, son? I said, you got any jobs, sir? He said, how old are you? He said, you never, it's heavy work, this is. I said, well, I said, I can do it. He said, I don't think, you're so skinny looking. He said, no, I'm sorry. And I walked away and he went, come here. So you ever worked with elephants? I went, no. He said, come with me. So I walked in, walked me across, this was winter cause, massive big elephant tent. And all the elephants were all lined up. And he said, your job is to look after these. You'll be washing them down and raking them out and cleaning them. But one day I was, um, I was painting uh, my day off. And Dickie Chipperfield, he said, he said, you do those, Max? I went, yeah. He said, can you do the sides of the trucks and the wagons and do the menagerie with the lions? I said, yeah. So, so I became part of the family and I ended up with my own caravan. What was the, this turning point in your life when you understood that art forging is a thing and you can start doing that? When did I start forging? Mm, yeah. Uh, I left the circus, I said, Dickie, I've had enough. I want to go to London, right? So, because I thought, I want to paint, you know. So, but I, you know, before that, I arrived in London and ended up in Shepherd's Bush. And I was dossing, I was sleeping rough, you know, with all the other dossers, but they looked after me. I couldn't afford new canvases, so I started buying old ones. And uh, I thought, I know what I'll do. Uh, I saw a copy of a Clarkson Stanfield, and I thought, I can copy that on old canvas, age it up with tea stains. The secret of what I was, I was good at was to represent, reproducing the colours of that day. And the ageing, I don't know if you're too young to remember what they called bead glue. It was a glue, scotch glue it's called, and you'd use it in woodwork. You'd place it in a pan, and that, cold water, leave it overnight, it goes to a jelly. Next day, you put it on the heating, and it comes to like a liquid. Get your old painting, do it on there, brush it over there, take it to a heater, but it can't be dry heat, it's got to be electric fire. And you circle it like that. Go to the tap, wash the bead glue off, because it's a water base, you're left with all the cracks. Empty your hoover out, put it on the floor, rub it all in, all the cracks are filled with crap, old glass on there, in frame, the nails you've got in the garden have been there for six weeks, tap them all in, Gone, you'd fool anybody because they think how the hell does he get these cracks on it and a guy came up to me who was my sort of my father you figure his name Samuel Cohen and he looked at me and he went hello son he said uh, pictures he said how much is that shipping scene I went 150 he went it's a bit cheap it's a good painting that he said where'd you get it from I said 
well, I, I just get him. He said, come on, tell me. I said, look, I paint them. He went, you paint these? I went, yeah. So he said, tell you what, he said, come and have a, a coffee with me or a drink of wine and we'll talk about it. That's how I got him to meet Sammy Cohen. And uh, the ageing and the auctions, all, it all stemmed from there. Then we, we hit the auction rooms big time, really big time. Can you talk me through that? What okay, they... so Sammy and I, we used to go as father and son, like hello, dad and all that sort of thing. We, we, we pretended that we knew nothing about paintings. First of all, we would go into the auction room and say, good morning, sir. And he'd go, good morning. And he said, uh, I said would you have a look at some smudges, sir? And he goes, yes, of course. So he said, I said, dad, bring them in. So he'd bring these pictures in. And he'd go, we used to sell a lot of, uh, bring a lot of crap, crap pictures, rubbish, and like we call pot boilers, like a lot of junk we used to buy. And you'd throw in a goodie, like a, like a Clarkson Stanfield. And you'd go, oh, that on the floor there. Can I have a look at that? You'd go, yeah, Dad, pick that picture up. And you pick the picture and you'd go, yes, that's quite nice. That is quite a nice picture. While I'm talking, Sammy would stop me and he'd go, you see, son? said, this gentleman really knows his business. If you study like he, you'd, what we're doing, trying to get his mind off what he's looking at. Then it used to go into the auctions and then it would be, we used to ring it. But we used to go to a preview and stand there next to the picture with our brochure, pretending we're potential buyers. And then we'd listen to the comments, right? So think, yeah, he'd come out and say, yeah, nice, nice, uh, nice picture. I'm gonna have a go at that. We'd, we'd look at him and think, right, on the day of the auction, we would pick them all out and think, he's gonna have a go, he's gonna have a go. And, and uh, Sammy was on one side, I'd be the other. We'd be, we'd be ringing it, we'd be bidding it up. So I had my certain sign, I might even straighten the tie or do something like that. He would, so if, when we, when it got to about two or three thousand, we probably started to sort of like, well, be careful or you're gonna buy the bloody thing back yourself. And it started to bid it up. We got to five and a half grand and we're out. So we used to do that, right? I'm out, gone. And that's how the auction, that's how we used to do. What would you say were the most famous paintings you copied? I paint, I copied everybody. When you say famous, I, I've, I hit a lot of galleries in Bond Street but with lesser known artists, you know, you don't walk around with a Rembrandt or a Picasso or something like that. It's too good to be true. I mean, a Lowry, yeah, I could do Lowry's, but he was very popular. He was, uh, that in 68, he was not quite so well known as he is today. But, you, you know, I was, we used to hit the auction rooms. I mean, I hit a certain gallery for 80,000 in Pond Street, you know, and that's what, that's what we were doing, that we were hitting big time. That was a couple of Samuel Palmer's and they looked good. But, you know, that was it. We did lesser known paint artists, you know. Can you tell me about Ronnie and Reggie Cray, how, how you painted yes. your mother? Yes, this was strange. One day, I'd already met Ronnie Cray's boyfriend on, the, on Green Park, you know, the railings with the paintings. He came up to me one day, he was suited and booted, about my age he was. And he went, hello, sir. He said, uh, do you do these smudges like? I said, yes. He said, do you ever do portraits from photographs? I went, yes. He said, uh, he said where are you then? I said, well, I'm at Portobello Road on Saturday. So he came down and he went, hello. So he said, uh, I've got his photograph. He said, do you want, do you want, could you do it? And it was like of a woman of about, about 50 or something like that. So he said, can you do that smudge then? I went, yes. He said, by next week? I went, yeah, I can do that for you. So I went and did it and came back with it. And he went, my mates were up the road at a pub called the, Duke, the Earl of Lonsdale, I think it was. And I, I, he walked in front of me and I walked at the back. And uh, I walked into the pub and it was pretty darkish, you know. I couldn't focus, it was quite sunny outside. And I, and I suddenly recognised Reggie. Reggie was sitting down, Ronnie was at the bar. And Ronnie came up to me, he went, hello, son. He said, you got that smudge then, you've done it, have you? My, my boy says you've done it. I went, yeah, he said, let's have a look then. So I pulled it out the bag like that and he, it all went quiet, I don't I didn't like it. And he went, he went, Reggie, have a look at this, Reggie. Have a look at this, Reggie. You really did this, son? I went, yes, he said, bloody marvellous. Look at Reggie, have a look. And he went, yeah, God, that's mum. Look, his, the eyes are right, aren't they? Sit down, son. So I sat down, cray there, cray there, I'm in the bloody middle. Have a drink. And I was going, I was so nervous, especially of Ronnie, you know, because there was something about him. And he went, he went, uh, love it. He said, how much are you then, son? And I was going, well, he went, and Reg said, give him a two. I thought, two quid, 200 pounds and 68 was a fortune. And Ronnie put his hand on my leg and he went, and oh, he's a good looking kid, isn't well? He looks like a pop star. And as I'm going out the door, he goes, here, 
He said, Max, Maxie boy, you must come and have tea with my mum in Valence Road. I went, I, I can't, Mr. Road, I've got to go to church on Sunday. I was out of that one quickly, <laughs> so that was it. It's quite a versatile skill to copy such different techniques and everything. How did you achieve that? I, I've just, I've got a knack of being able to copy any subject. Doesn't matter. I've done Picasso. I did a Picasso and I couldn't even, a man with a guitar, I didn't know which way it went up. I did it upside down apparently, but it didn't matter because it, I didn't know. But, but there are, nobody fakes today. It's just because, it, because of the, the knowledge they have, the, the, you know, the, the scientific. In my day, they didn't have that. You could get away with it. Now they can even tell you what day you painted it or, or the colour you've used, you know. So, you know, now it's, it's too difficult, you know. I wouldn't bother anyway. What was the point that got you into prison? Um, <clears throat> well, the first time I went into Nick and uh, I was tossing, I ended up in Dorchester. Uh, I was sleeping in the railway cut truck and I got up one morning uh, and I thought, right, no food, starving home. I was in Dorchester, walked up the high street and thought, hello. Uh, don't, I didn't eat for two days. I walked into this hotel, little guest outing, and I saw a chandelier. So I nicked the chandelier and a hundred day clock and wheeled it down the high street and <laughs> just thought I could sell it for food. And then somebody, uh, somebody at the station said, this guy just walked in, you know, wheeled something in the barrow and they got me. And I, I ended up um, in the magistrate's court and I refused to give them my address. So they gave me three months. But as soon as you get in Nick and they know you can paint and draw, you're made because they respect you for who you are there. And I had a separate cell and I started my drawing and I was, my, I was doing um, all drawings and dogs and pictures and children for the, for the old lags. So I, got, I became a tobacco baron. I was doing a painting, a drawing for some tobacco. There's an artist called Samuel Palmer, pen and ink drawings. Now, Sammy used to come to me on a visiting day. Now, in those days, I was not high risk. And I used to sit on the table and Sammy would say, are you doing, son? Are you finding it hard? I went, no. He said, dear, listen, I fancy doing a bit of work here. I went, am I going to do it here? I said, it might buy post. He went, no. He said, up my sleeve, I've got um, six sheets of old paper, which he nicked from the library. He used to go to the library and raise them out of the old books, you know. And he used to roll them up and I'd be talking to him like that. And he'd go, right, and then he'd go and he said, now, Lon, do your time, keep your head down, and you'll be out soon. And, and then he would just slide it up my sleeve, and I'd go back, and I'd say, out, Governor. He went, OK, then. I said, see you later, Dad. And I used to go up to my cell, put them in my Bible, and I'd knock out a Samuel Palmer pen and ink drawing. And then I'd think, right, in my Bible, and then they'd get about six together. Next visit, three weeks after, he'd come along, what'd you get? And I've done five for you. I went, good lad. So he used to, to do the same thing, roll them up in his sleeve. So when I came out, I had a few bob in the bank, you know? So it was good. They were going for about 1,500 quid. That's the first time I went in, Nick, but after that, I did three stretches for um, forgery. I remember the judge saying to me, Mr. Brandred, you're such an accomplished painter. Why do you persist in doing these forgery? I said, it's like this. When I see an old canvas, I can't help it. I just get a withdrawal simple. I've got a paint on the bugger. And I get that feeling now, you know? I, I, I must admit, I miss the old days. I really do miss the old days. Yeah. So there are the three times in prison. Yeah. How, have you spent a long time in there? What I were did the sentences? A, I did an 18 a month for forgery, two Samuel Palmers from a greedy dealer called Otto who tried to sell the, what, the same paintings in the same auction, uh, auction, so he got Nick. Came back to me, I got raided in Cricklewood, came in, a fraud squad, and of course I got two on the easel, right? not finished, and he went, hello. I said, I don't know anything about them, sir. Anyway, bank to rights gone. So I got 18 months on that one. And then the other time was, uh, I've got, I got an eight month. Uh, yeah, I got an eight month for doing, a, yeah, that was the same sort of thing. Uh, it was fake at the gallery. For, the galleries uh, got wise to me after a while. I didn't just do it in London. I did Manchester, I did uh, Canterbury. I did a oh, nice big hit in Canterbury, yeah. Did you ever feel guilty about selling someone a, a copy? No, honestly, it was survival. I mean, I felt sorry one day when I was in the auction room and I did a Domerson. Oh, it was a good, it was a Dutch winter scene, skating figures, and it went up to 14,000. And, and it was a total fake, but the calves were so right. It was perfect. 
And the guy came to me after a Persian guy in a lovely suit. He went, I'm so sorry, my friend, you did not get the picture. I said, well, Governor, you win some, you lose some, sir. That's it. But I did feel guilty. I do think feel guilty sometimes, yeah. It, it, was just, it was just living, surviving, because I've been ripped off so many dealers and that sort of thing. You know, you live on the edge. I'm OK now. I'm, I, I don't, money is, is, is OK, but I still love meeting people. I love all this. I love talking. Um, I, do, I love my Bernardos. I made a lot of money. I made 80 grand for Bernardos with, you know, auctions. You know? I, I met Ollie Reed in one of my auctions, so, yeah. But what would you say your, is your favourite style to copy? Uh, I did a Caravaggio and I got it pretty damn close to the original. It's called The Taken of Christ, if you know it. There's, there's, a, there's Caravaggio, there's the two soldiers, uh, there's Judas, there's Jesus and St Peter. I sold that, you know, and I, I, when I sold it I was heartbroken because I didn't want to sell it. So you, I've got a Coolidge, I've got a Coolidge, which the dog's playing poker, have you seen that? I love it. And I don't, I don't give a monkey's about the money side of it, I really don't. If any of you need a bank seat on your kitchen door, ring me up, I'll come and do it half price. I'm gonna, uh, You're going to what? I'm going to hold you to that. <laughs> <laughs> so we just showed them the film of what we did and all the photographs. And I just remember the security, the head of security just putting his head in his hands and just over and over again saying two million because they'd spent two million pounds on the defences and, and it was all for nothing in the face of, you know, a, a cheeky scouser, really.